In this video, we're going to work through these 10 examples of sketching cubics. Um, all of these um, are in factorised form, apart from the last one, where I'm going to show you how we can deal with that, how we can sketch it and put it into factorised form. So if we look at the first one, um, the key thing when a cubic's in factorised form, you're looking to see the factors. Where is it crossing uh, the x-axis? So we've got factors of x minus 1, x plus 1, and x. So it's crossing the x-axis at 1, minus 1, and 0. These are the three values of x that will make y 0. So this first one is crossing through at 0, 1, and minus 1. Okay. Now if I multiplied this out, I would get a positive x cubed, 1x cubed. And so we start in the bottom left. And so this curve must look something like this. Okay, minus 1, 0, and 1. And that's my first curve. Okay, let's have a look at number 2. So we've got y is equal to x minus 2, x minus 4, and x plus 1. So the roots are 2, 4, and minus 1. So we have minus 1, 2, and 4. Now, because we're starting in the bottom, uh, well, we're going to be starting in the bottom left because we're going to have a positive x cubed when we multiply out those brackets. So it must look something like this. OK, just missed that one. So minus 1, 2, and 4. And we can identify where it's crossing the y-axis by multiplying through minus 2, minus 4, and 1. So that would be 8. Now. In your sketches, try to be appropriate with the symmetry. There, this part of the curve is not symmetric. It's not a parabola, but it's not too far off being symmetric. So you don't want to make sure, you don't want to kind of um, put 8 as being the maximum point, for example. Um, you want to kind of space it out reasonably well to... F that's why I've put 2 further away from the y-axis than I've put my minus 1, so that it forces me to draw the curve that way. Otherwise, you're going to be too, too likely to end up doing something like this, minus 1 and 2, and then drawing a curve that looks something like that. Okay, So just beware of what you're doing. OK, so that's number 2. So let's have a look at number 3. Now, number 3, we've got x minus 3 times x plus 2 squared. We have this repeated factor. So we've got a repeated root of minus 2. So in this case, we've got a root minus 2 and 1 at 3. Now, because we have a root, a repeated root at minus 2, that means that we just brush the curve at that point. So the, we've got a positive x cubed again, so we're starting in the bottom left. We come up, just brush the x-axis there, back down, and then through that point. So this is minus 2, and that's 3. And we can identify where it's crossing the y-axis, because that's when we have minus 3. But we've got to be careful. We've got minus 3 times 2 times 2. So that's minus 12. Now just imagine that we've got those brackets written now, x minus 3, x plus 2, x plus 2. So we've got the minus 3 times 2 times 2. OK, and that's number 3. So with number 4, we have y is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 1 squared. So we've got this case again, like in number 3, where we've got this repeated factor. And so we've got this repeated root. So let's see what happens in this case. So we've got uh, the minus 5, and we've got 1. OK? So we've got a positive x cubed again. So we're still starting in the bottom left. So we're going to start on the bottom left, cross through that minus 5, then come back down round. Oh, didn't do that very well. 
So we're going to come back down and round and just brush the x-axis at that point. And so we've got the minus 5 and the 1. And we can identify where it's crossing the y-axis by multiplying the 5 by minus 1 by minus 1. So 5 times minus 1 times minus 1 is 5. OK? And that would be the shape of my curve. Right, OK, so we've got number 5. Now, number 5 is 2x minus 1 times x squared minus 1. Now, the x squared minus 1, remember, is the difference of two squares. So that's, that could be written as x minus 1 times x plus 1, if you were properly factorising it. So something to spot there. So we've definitely got a curve that's crossing through at 1 and minus 1. And this bracket will be 0 when x is a half. So it's definitely crossing through at a half as well. So minus 1, half, and 1. So if I multiplied this all out, I'd get a 2x cubed, a positive x cubed. So we're starting the bottom left again. So bottom left, go through that point. Didn't do that very well. Come back round. Something like that. OK, and so crossing through the y-axis, uh, minus 1 times minus 1 times 1, which is just 1. OK, and that's number 5. All right, let's have a look at number 6. So number 6, we've got y is equal to 4 minus x times x plus 2 times x plus 3. OK, so we've got this curve crossing through at 4, minus 2 and minus 3. So minus 2, minus 3 and 4. Now, if I multiplied this out, I would have a minus x cubed because of that minus x there. So because it's minus x cubed, that must mean I'm starting the top left, not the bottom left. So top left, coming down through that point. Ooh. That didn't go very well. Let me try that again. OK, let's try that again. So it's going to be coming through and down. So it's a little bit more symmetric on that side. So we've got going through minus 3, minus 2, and 4. OK, and we can identify where it's crossing the y-axis as well. So that would be at 4 times 2 times 2. So 4 twos are 8, 8 threes are 24. OK, so that's number 6. So number 7, we've got y is equal to 5 minus 2x times 4 minus 3x times 10 minus x. So... We've got um, five halves from that one, four thirds from that one. So four thirds is less than five halves. So we're going to have four thirds and five halves. And we've also got uh, 10. So 10 would be even further along on this axis. So. Not really to scale, but that will have to do. Now, we also need to identify what uh, shape it's taking on, because we've got a minus 2x times a minus 3x times a minus x. So three minuses, so minus 6x squared. So we'll be starting in the top left. So the curve must cross through the y-axis at some point in order to then cross through at 4 thirds, cross through at 5 halves, and then increase to then turn around and go back down through 10. So where is it crossing the y-axis? Well, that would be at 5 times 4 times 20. 5 fourths are 20. 5 times 4 times 10, sorry. So 5 times 4 is 20, times 10 is 200. I was getting ahead of myself there. OK, so that's number 7. So you should see by this point that 
in order to work through, I'm identifying where it's crossing the, y -axis, uh, the x axis first. Then I'm identifying what shape the curve is taking. Is it a positive x cubed? Is it a negative x cubed? And then, based on that, I'm identifying where is it crossing the y axis. Now, you can identify the y axis before you draw the curve um, because that will give you a little bit more information and confirm um, it'll confirm whether you've identified which way the curve is changing. So whether it's a positive or negative x cubed. Um, but I would forewarn that in some cases it's difficult to then get the scaling right. Um, or in a sense that your curve might go a little bit more wibbly wobbly if uh, you put in your y axis point first. Okay? So, you know, try it both ways, see which you prefer. There's no right way of doing it. So number eight, y is equal to x cubed minus eight. Now, we know what y is equal to x cubed looks like. So y equals x cubed minus eight must be the same graph, but translated down. So each of the y coordinates has lost eight. So we must actually have a curve that looks like y equals x cubed is just a translated version of it. Okay, So this would be down at minus 8. The only other point of interest would be where it's crossing the x-axis. So that would be when a y is 0. So y is 0. We can add 8 to both sides and then cube root both sides. So x would have to be 2. Okay, And that would be the curve for number 8. So a slightly different uh, idea to the rest that we've been looking at. But remember, that's still a cubic. Okay? And the same for number 9. I mean, number 9, we've got y is equal to x minus 1 all cubed. Okay? So this is a little bit difficult uh, if we just use the methodology that we've learned so far. Because clearly, it is a curve, a cubic, that will be going through um, the x-axis at 1, because we've got that singular root. But beyond that, it's difficult to say. However, the fact is that because we're going to get a positive x cubed, we'd be starting in the bottom left, okay, um, and moving towards the top right, we can identify where it crosses the y-axis, because that would be minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1. So that would be minus 1. So it goes through minus 1. OK. So because it's starting in the bottom left, the curve must go through minus 1. OK, looks something like that. And from that point onwards, must increase and go up like that. Now, I actually know that there are no other bumps in the curve, okay? Because ultimately, ultimately it can't do that because this is just y is equal to x cubed where I've replaced the x with x minus 1. And so this is actually a translation of the y equals x cubed curve uh, by the vector 1, 0. It's just moved it along 1 to the right. And that's why it would look this way. Okay? Um, you know, you can try points as well, and you can substitute points in. There's no other point where this curve will bend. Also remember, you know, what I said before about uh, cubics, they all have that, um, that point of inflection and that rotational symmetry, okay? So once you'd identified that the curve had to come down this way, it meant that the curve also had to go up that way in order to be, uh, rot have that rotational symmetry to it. So the last one we've got to deal with is this number 10. y is equal to minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x plus 4. So how could I go about it? Well, 
using the techniques that we've seen previously, um, we want to be able to factorize this to get it into factorized form. So the only way that we know how to do that is to use the factor theorem. So let's say we call f of x, this minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x plus 4, just for the, uh, to help us with notation. So if we tried f of 1, for example, 1 is a factor of 4, so it, it might work. We'd get minus 1 plus 5 take away 8 plus 4. So minus 1 plus 5 is 4, take away 8 is minus 4, plus 4 is 0. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. So we can use x minus 1 and polynomial division. Okay, so we need a minus x cubed. So we'd have to have minus x squared. That would have to be x squared. We need 5x squared, so 4x squared there. So 4x and minus 4x. We need minus 8x, so minus 4x, minus 4, and 4, uh, which is what we have. So f of x must be x minus 1 times minus x squared plus 4x minus 4. Now, if you don't want to have to deal with that minus sign there, you could always take the minus sign out okay, and it would change the sign of each of the values within that bracket. Not in both brackets, only in one, okay? Only in the one. Otherwise, you would have introduced another negative. So this is minus x minus 1, and this is x minus 2 squared. Okay, so if you like, you can bring that minus sign back into that bracket. If you like, that's uh, perfectly fine. So we've actually got f of x is equal to 1 minus x times x minus 2 squared. So if I was to graph this, I would be going through at 1 and 2. Okay, now if I multiplied this out, I would have the minus x cubed, like I've got there. So it must start in the top left, and there must be this repeated root at 2. So the curve must come down through 1, repeated root at 2, and then back round. Okay, so 1, 2, and then crossing the y-axis at 4. Okay? And that is what this curve must look like. Now, obviously, that curve hinged on the fact that it had um, factors that I could find using the factor theorem. In general, if I just wrote down any old cubic, um, that wouldn't be the case. So I set this up um, so that this process would work. And you can see it all in action.